In this lecture, we're going to talk about what happens when you fail the exam. Yes, it sucks tremendously, but it is not the end of the world. I personally have failed multiple certification exams, and it is in no way fun. You just spend months preparing for this, you put your life on hold, you spend a ton of time and a ton of money, and all this for nothing. And what you do next really determines how successful you are. And not just for the exam, but for life in general. Learning to fail is a skill set. It is something you need to be good at. Because when you fail at something, that just means you're trying difficult things. If you're not failing at anything, well, that means you're not really trying anything that's difficult. Certification exams are difficult. So if you want to get ahead in life, you need to learn how to fail right. When I did my first ever IT certification, I failed. So did the other three people that I was studying with. We weren't ready. And out of the four of us, two of them said, well, it's probably just too difficult. I'm not good enough. I'm not going to waste any more time or money on this. And they left it at that. And at that point, all the time you have spent, all the money, all the effort, that is truly wasted. For myself, I had maybe half a day of negative self-talk. Oh, this is crap. I'm not good enough. Why am I wasting my time here? I had the same thoughts that they had. But then at some point, I was like, that's not true. This certification is not going to get the better of me. I'm going to beat it. And one of the other guys in the group before that also eventually passed the exam had the exact same thoughts. We sat down. We talked it over. We sulked for a few days. We felt bad for ourselves. But then we got back up on the horse. We started studying again. The first exam that I failed was one of the exams for the CCNA, Cisco Certified Network Associate. But today I have three CCNAs. I also have two CCNPs. The two guys who gave up have, well, no certifications. They are still, 14 years later, stuck in the same job that they hate. So if you fail, give yourself the time to feel bad about it. Sulk, be upset, then brush yourself off, and hopefully you have someone in your family that can help you with that positive reinforcement. Then you go back at it. So after the exam, when you get the printout, if you fail, you get told how well you did in all of the domains, which ones you're weak in, and they'll have a score of below, near, or above proficiency. If you pass the exam, you just get the congratulations you passed letter. You have no clue how well you did in any of the domains. When you fail, you do. Now, if you fail, almost regardless of your scores, I would start studying right away, and I would rebook the exam in 30 days, as soon as you can. And then, of course, focus on the areas where you got below or near proficiency. That doesn't mean don't study the ones where you had above, but spend less time there. If you are near or below in three or more domains, I would suggest starting completely over. Watch the whole video series, supplement your notes, watch the video series again, take practice tests, and then every time you're done with a practice test, you re-study everything that you got wrong until you are at a point where you can explain the concept and you're clear on why you got it wrong. Then you take another test. And this is just like anything you do that is difficult, it is much easier if you have the right approach. So answer exactly what you are asked. Don't answer what you want to answer. Deconstruct the question. Figure out what are they actually asking here. If you can narrow it down, eliminate answer options. And if you still have two where you said it could be either, trust your intuition. And then after you fail, if this happens multiple times, remember you have to wait 30 days, then you have to wait 60 days, and then you have to wait 90 days. And you can only have four attempts every year. And I think it's important, regardless of how many domains you have below or near, start studying right away. Because all the knowledge is still fresh in your mind. It is in your short-term memory. I know people who failed the exam, took a three-month break, and when they started studying again, they had to start completely over because they forgot most of the knowledge. Some of them did start over, but most of them actually just gave up. Oh, I forgot it all. I don't want to waste all that time again. And at that point, all your efforts are truly wasted. Whereas if you start over again, you get back on the horse, you start studying the areas that you're weak in. After you pass the exam, no one will ever care that you failed. So for the exams where I failed, I gave myself half a day. I took the rest of the day off when I failed the exam and said, okay, I'm okay to feel bad about it today, but tomorrow we start studying again. So when I did my CCNP concentration, Cisco Certified Networking Professional, you need to pass three exams to get certified. Two of them I passed the first time. The third one was CCNP routing, which I worked very little with, and you need 690 points to pass. I got 688. 
I was two points away from passing. That was not a very happy Thor. It was right before Christmas. I just wanted to be done so I could celebrate Christmas with my family. But again here, I follow the same advice I'm giving you. And with Cisco certifications, it's only five days you have to wait. So I went ahead, I scheduled my exam again for the next week, I had the exam printed out with my week areas, and then I took a week of vacation. I did nothing but study. And luckily here, my wife is very supportive. She helped me with that positive reinforcement. You can do this, this is just a bump in the road, you're going to beat it. And then after that week of only studying, I felt pretty strong in my weak areas. I knew I was not going to fail in them again. And when you do the CCNP exam, you can see your percentages. So I went into the exam with a lot of confidence and I failed again. 688 points out of 690. Two points again. That is less than one question. And the reason I failed again, even though I had focused my entire week just on my weak areas, is the CCNP, just like any of the IC squared certifications, have a very large question pool. The first time, I got a ton of BGP questions. I used my week to mostly study that I was really strong in BGP, and on the second test, I got almost no questions on BGP. So again, I sulked for half a day, and then I restudied. And now, I was even more determined. I waited the five days until I could take the exam again, and I passed with great scores. So what I'm trying to tell you here is that failing an exam really means very little if you have the right attitude. You need to understand that you need to fail forward. Failing is a learning experience, okay? I learned something, I know how the exam works, next time I'm going to be much better prepared. And yes, paying for the exam another time is a bitter pill to swallow. It definitely was for us with my exams, but then again, the 35% higher salary, the salary over $100,000 a year can easily offset that. And potentially, if you are lucky, you might work for a company that will help you pay for your exams. If you look at my certification path, I have some of my certifications listed here. And out of a little over 20, I have failed 5 of them. But every single certification I have failed, I later passed. And whenever I have a job interview, I'm applying for a position, they don't care. Why would they? I passed. I understood how to get past the defeat and actually turn it into a win. I've even used it on an interview. They asked me what was the hardest part about taking certifications while well, failing. And then they asked, well, what do you do when you do that? I explained my process. And by doing that, I showed them that I had that critical skill. I can turn a loss into a win. I knew how to get past the failure and move on. I completely understand that this is much easier saying than doing. But think back to why are you doing this? What are you going to get out of getting your certification? Has that changed? I would hope not. Since it hasn't changed, go forward and continue on your path. Don't let the certifications get the better of you, win. So the better you prepare, the more that you make sure that you study right, you approach the exam the exact right way, well that's going to help raise your chances. And with that, we are done with this video. I hope it has helped you understand that failing your exam is not the end, it's just a little bump on the road, and you are going to pass this. You can do this. Thank you for being here and I will see you in the next lecture.